And we're still on the breakfast. Uh, time for us to look at the papers this morning. Usually we run through uh, the leadership, the punch, the nation, the guardian, depending on what's available. A big shout out to our paper vendor for making these papers available. Tunde Kola Wale joins us this morning. He's a legal practitioner uh, right here in Lagos. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, Lady Mercy. Right. I'm not fine. <laughs> I don't have money to, to eat, move around, and do some other very important things. Don't worry. I'm sure money would definitely come. I okay. hope so. Well, let's, let's start off with the leadership. Uh, looking at the leadership newspaper, I think it, it, it correlates with uh, your consent as to uh, cash crunch. No end in sight as President Muhammad Buhari, governors, CBN, keep moon. Silence is going to linger. Federal government fingers opposition parties in Naira swap crisis. CBN won't be used to thwart the 2023 elections or poll. That's what Godwin Emefile is quoted to say. And Tunubu appeals for calm over fuel and Naira scarcity. One killed in Ogun riots. Uh, that's what we talked about. Now, let's move away from Nigeria a bit uh, to Syria and Turkey, where the earthquake has taken the life of uh, 7,000. Let's say a girl, four rescued, and the toll, uh, the death toll hit 7,000. Uh, that's what you find. I mean, if you look at the videos, there are imagine, real time videos, very disheartening. Prayers and our thoughts with uh, those who have lost their loved ones, and of course with Syria and Turkey. Federal government bull flag uh, of 11, 116 billion Kanu Kazuja road construction. I hope I got that correctly. Navy arrests two traffickers and rescues 18 victims in Kanu. After declaring strike, Ibman makes a U turn, resumes operation. Political elite must adjust to reality of national unity. The vice president, Yemi Oshibajo, is quoted on that. And just before we move away from uh, the leadership, there's also another headline that says, I will fully exploit Bauchi and Gombe oil fields as president, Atiku is quoted to say. And at a time where you have uh, people, countries of the world, moving away from fossil fuel, at a time where we're not even able to meet up our quota production. However, fingers are crossed. The Nation newspaper is what we're going to be looking at now. Narrow scarcity sparks protests. There's also a pictorial representation, you know, to that uh, headline. Bini's CBN office, bank branches short. Uh, there's also that report where a certain bank has been short across, I mean, her presence has been short across the entire nation. Uh, but we really have to verify and be sure that that's, you know, actually what it is. Protesters block Bini or Red Road. Uh, Buhari meets Tambowal and Emefiele, among others. Uh, that's also another one. Tunibu calls for calm over the cash crunch and petrol scarcity. Court frees Omokere. Two firms in $1.6 billion oil uh, fraud case. Well, these are some of the headlines you find this morning on uh, the Nation News. Before we quickly turn our attention to The Guardian. The Guardian says, Buhari cancels meeting with governors as TUC issues ultimatum. The currency exchange saga is, is what's making the rounds on all of the papers this morning. Almost all of them. Meets with, Buha, meets with Bagudu, Tambuwal, and Mefili, EFCC boss. Tunibu bankers call for calm. Uh, PDP hoarding of new Naira notes cursing Nigerians' pain. Protests rock Ondo and Ogun. Lagos APC suspends campaign. Uh, you still also have another that says, Mefili can't fund activities of IPOP, says group. Wow. Ghanaian star rescued from rubbles after the earthquake. Uh, that footballer, we talked about that yesterday. WK backtracks, approves the stadium for Atiku's rally. And uh, INEC chairman meets a Mephili, demands concession for election operations. INEC chairman or chair meets a Mephili and demands concession for election operation. 
uh, you also find that uh, picture more like uh, having a great time. The Punch says, Naira crisis may disrupt polls. INEC warns Emefili and SA. NSA, I beg your pardon. Naira crisis may disrupt polls. INEC warns Emefili, NSA, as NAS. Some of our service providers have no bank accounts. Commission laments. Buhari, governor's meet. And Shell Minister says president's hand tied. Bank shot branches over customers' attacks. CBN calls for camp. Take that again. Bank shot branches over customers' attack. And the CBN calls for camp. Well, uh, uh, there are several questions that's been raised as to if this is the right decision. I mean, if it's rational for any bank to short their operations or Maybe we need to look at beefing up security or appealing to the people or, you know, finding a way. But don't you think that this probably might just raise the level of anxiety among the people in the midst of chaos? Well, another header says, fuel price to skyrocket as markets is threatened shut down. Banks ordered to freeze Pakistan terror finances or financiers account. And how powerful forces try to stop Tunubu Khan Daisy. APC vice chair has uh, been vocal on that. Now, Turkey, Syria, earthquake that hits 7,146. Very unfortunate incident. Ogun Ondo, Edo protesters storm banks and demand cash. Ekiti owes pensioners 40 billionaire gratuities, Uyibanji is quoted to say. And U.S. indicts Nigeria of stealing Varsity's $1.4 million. I take that again. U.S. indicts Nigerian of stealing Varsity's $1.4 million. Uh, federal government plans new policy to track public spending. These are the headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. Well, it's time for us to have a guest join us and share his thoughts to Nicola Willis on standby. He joins us via phone. Tunde, once again, thank you for joining us and good morning. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. It's the cash crunch. There's no end in sight. It's President Muhammad Buhari, governors, including CBN, silent, and all of this. What are your thoughts? Well, honestly speaking, it would appear to me that uh, the government of President Muhammad Buhari and uh, the governor of the Central Park of Nigeria have no respect whatsoever for the Nigerian people. They treated the Nigerian people with so much contempt, such as has never been seen in the history of our country. I have had calls to visit my bank several days, and what I've seen in those banks and all that is appalling. We are told that it's the banks that are holding the new Naira notes. But from what I have seen, most of those banks, I saw that most of the bankers are under tremendous pressure. And they really never had enough of these Naira notes to give to their customers. If they had a, a, enough Naira notes, new Naira notes to give to their people, I'm not too sure that they would take delight in working under the kind of pressure in which they are working. So furthermore, in some other countries of the world, with the crisis we have in our hands, the Federal Executive Council and all those who will have the role to play in resolving the crisis that we have in our hands will be holding a round the clock meeting to find solutions to the problem. But you could see that both the President, the Vice President, the Governor of CBM, and then the Senate, the House of Rep the Minister of Finance. Everybody is just uh, standing by and watching Akimbo. This to me is uh, terrible. And the uh, crisis has started brewing in some of the states. We have had protests in Benin, we have had in the battle, we have had in Abel Kucha, in which uh, people have been shot and killed. So, and the funny aspect of it all, we have been told it is certain hoodlums that are uh, trying to attack certain places and whatever. 
So if you make it neither available, if there is 12, and people can move around easily and conduct their businesses, and if uh, unemployment is not this high, will you be calling your own children who long? I don't know of anybody, no matter how bad the person might be, that will willingly want to kill himself or just expose himself to being shot by the security agencies. I also happened to have passed through uh, Osho yesterday, and I saw that soldiers have been deployed all over the place. I saw soldiers under the bridges and some of the strategic locations and what have you. These are self-inflicted things, which ordinarily should not have happened. And you must remember that what I make is saying is the reality. Take, for example, some of the material that they will use to conduct the next election, which is just about two weeks or three weeks ago, are kept in some of these bands that are now shutting down. You also need the transport uh, uh, unions to help you carry some of these materials around during the election time. So if they have no money to maintain their vehicle and no money to fuel, I mean, uh, their, their vehicles and what have you, what is going to happen to the election? The election might be in jeopardy. And now, I think the election is final. I think countries are already making simulations that they can in our hands. We see an attempt to really score to the next coming election. You also recall that one of the presidential candidates has been shouting that this crisis is, has been created purposely or, or just targeted at him. I wouldn't know why a nation, why a government will make a policy to target just one individual in the society. I have never seen it done in my life. So whichever way we look at it and all that, these are self-inflicted things. These are things which the government of President Muhammad Wali to take responsibilities for. Well, um, underneath that bold headline, uh, there's also thoughts as to the federal government saying that parties are responsible for the narrow swap crisis that we're faced with. I I'd like you to, you know, express your thoughts. Does it seem like the federal government is helpless in this case? I mean, if the federal government is in the know that, or they have identified those who are causing this mayhem, what exactly, uh, what exactly is stopping the federal government from taking actions? Well, as uh, the accusation that the political parties um, the responsible for some of the challenges that we have with regards to enough Naira being in, new Naira no being in circulation and fuel uh, crisis. I take that with a pinch of uh, salt. Why do I take it with a pinch of salt? That assumes that the political parties and some of these individuals are more powerful than the state. And I don't think so. I don't know of anybody in Nigeria. I don't know of any institution in Nigeria, maybe except the Nigerian Nami, that is more powerful than the Nigerian state. That if such people commit an infraction, the federal government cannot use a due process to go after them to normalize the situation. Initially, what we were told, especially when the fire crisis started bringing, was that it is certain marketers that are holding the fuel from the marketers, they are now talking about political parties, and now talking about so many other things that uh, when you listen to such uh, uh, what they are saying, it's very irritating to the eye. I mean, to the mind, it's insulting to the intelligence of the Nigerian people. As regards whether the federal government has the way with that to resolve the problem, I still think so. Ultimately, when you are planning a thing like this, you won't have a very good idea of how much money is in circulation and how much of that money you want to replace with the new Naira note and print that quantity of the note that you want to replace. But with what we are saying, I don't think that the CBN and the now have an idea of how much money is in circulation in Nigeria. I'm not also sure that they have a very good idea how much quantity of that money they want to replace. 
So, if that is the case, it means there is a crisis of planning. We have not made adequate uh, uh, planning or preparation for the replacement of this landlord. But like I said in one of our programs before, this could be a strategy to reduce the amount of money in circulation and also to fight inflation. And if it is a strategy to fight inflation, I think it is a wrong strategy, a wrong method that they have adopted. But Tunde Kola, well, it, this is yeah. not, you know, news. I mean, that's been put out. It's been very clear, uh, the intention of this policy as to, you know, inflation and what have you. There's several thoughts why uh, you have the redesign narrow note or this policy on board at the time. But... Um, so we don't dwell too much on this particular issue. Let's move further. The protest that's sparking up or that started in different parts of, you know, the country, for instance, in Ondo State, Ogun State, uh, Edo State, do you think that it's politically motivated? Or uh, what do you think about it? You mean the crisis we have in those states? The protests that we have, I mean, Nigerians have taken to the streets. That's the report. Yes. Uh, apart from that being the report, we have also seen that. We've also, you know, had all of this that's going on in uh, different parts of the country. Especially uh, states like Ogun State. You also have uh, Ondo State and Edo State. My question is, do you think that this protest is politically motivated? Especially when you juxtapose that with how many months ago, I mean... How, how much of Nigerians have you had taken to the streets? Or, I mean, how many Nigerians have you had going to the streets to protest, uh, you know, the fuel situation and what have you? So do you think that um, this might just be a sponsored protest to cause confusion and mayhem? Today, Kola Wale, can you hear me? Tunde Kolawale. Well, fortunately, I think we have been disconnected, but hopefully we're able to uh, connect with Tunde Kolawale. He's a legal practitioner. He joined us via phone this morning for Off the Press, and he's been sharing his thoughts on some national critical issues as, you know, we inch closer to the election. And one, you know, that uh, has been around is the issue of the narrow note. I think that conversation is going to go on for a very long time until we're able to make that available. Now, Nigerians have to grapple with the non-availability of the narrow note, uh, not even the new or the old. I mean, so we're talking about there's no money. There's no money, whether it's the new or it's the old. And then, you know, the narrow has been, uh, you have to buy the narrow now. Nigerians are buying the narrow with the narrow. Prior to this time, you only have to buy the dollar. But now we have to buy the Naira with the Naira because if you get to the ATMs, the ATMs are not really dispensing. And then you walk to the counter. Some of the banks are not operating. And let's say uh, for the sake of having you know, network challenges and what have you, this has been going on. Let's not even forget that there's an extension as to when uh, the deadline will be, you know, the Naira note will no longer become a legal tender. And that's on the 10th of February, according to the CBN. It will no longer become a legal tender. That means that you can no longer use uh, the old note as a means of transaction, buying or, and selling and what it is that you want to say. That's no longer going to be valid on the 10th of February. But the point is, and prior to this you know, introduction of the new Naira note, Nigerians had complained over time about not seeing the non-availability of the new note. And so you go to the ATMs, you go to the POS operators, and you walk into the banking hall, and most times you've been giving the old note. What exactly is going on? Is it that the CBN uh, did not print enough of this funds? I mean, how much of the new note was chunked into the system? And prior to this time, this probably will not be the first time we've had, you know, new notes being introduced into the economy. But over time, it's just, it has a natural way of fading away, it fizzles out without any, you know, <laughs> deliberate effort by saying, oh, you can't use it at a certain time. But it's just gradually, because what happens is if you're chunking the, I mean, if you say that you're introducing a new note and you want to retrieve the old one, what happens is you're chunking the new note into the system and you have a lot of it. So automatically, when I go into the market or I, I you know, engage in trade and what have you, in the period of exchanging hands uh, in business and what have you, 
I'm giving the old nodes, I probably might be collecting the new one. And that's how it goes. So naturally, the old node just you disappears without any struggle, without any, you know, fight. But what exactly is going on? It's been quite different. And so if you say we want uh, to retrieve the old nodes, we say come back and return all of the nodes that you have. We're not longer going to be using this old node as a means of transaction. Why don't we have the new ones? And then you, you put out, you know, a stipulated amount that people can withdraw. And now you say that you can no longer withdraw that amount. You have to, you know, withdraw only 20,000 or... And even at that, the banks are not working. It's a lot of blame game. So it's, it's very confusing. Mentally, I think Nigerians are going through a lot. And it's time, you know, for uh, everyone to self-care, you know, because it's pretty confusing. So you walk to the banks. A lot of banks have shut down operation uh, for the sake of not having, uh, you know, network. And some people have blamed that on the fact that you don't have the manpower. Manpower is no longer available. I mean, with 1,001 persons who are looking for jobs, so if you say you have those in the IT sector who have left, uh, is there no possibility of a replacement? Why do we have to go through that? And then we say we're trying to encourage a, a cashless policy or cashless society. That's what we're trying to uh, promote. Now, and if you say we're trying to promote a cashless economy, a cashless society, what happens with, you know, the uh, e-transaction? It's so cumbersome. And so in most cases, you can't even have a single transaction just go at, you know, click of a finger or a button. What a view, I mean, just at the click of a button or sending the command, it doesn't work. You have to try it over and over again. So uh, these are some of the issues. But this morning, we hear the federal government saying that uh, some political parties or political parties are responsible for this. And the question is how. I was hoping that um, our guests will probably be with us this morning to answer the how. How are these parties doing it? What exactly is going on? Is it that we have these funds that have been released to the banks, the commercial banks, and uh, how are they really getting this money, really? How are they involved in this crisis that we're faced with? How are they involved in the non-availability of the new Naira or the Naira, as it were? What becomes of us on the 10th of February, where you, you, you can no longer use the old note as a means of transaction, which is also very scarce, and now you can find a new note? What exactly is going to happen? And even the e-transaction is not seamless. And so you have... Uh, challenges with service providers and what have you. I think it's, it's just uh, too much, you know, to grapple with at a time. There's also protests that has also rocked different parts of the country. I mean, to be very precise, states like uh, Ogun State, Ondo State, and Edo State have witnessed several protests. Some people think that this is actually not ordinary. Ordinary in the sense that... Uh, how many months now we have been experienced petrol, we've experienced petrol scarcity as a country, especially in Lagos, throughout last year from November, if I'm not mistaken, up until this moment, how many months and counting? I mean, what exactly happened? So we, people, we started raising questions. We in this space have been asking. We remember vividly in 2012 when there was a point to remove subsidy, or oh, it was apparently removed by the then Jonathan administration, he was president. And uh, we, we found out that there was a social movement in different parts of the country. They call it Occupy Nigeria. And people are saying, now we have petrol selling for 300 and something, 350 naira. That's against the time where petrol was selling for 87 naira. Uh, it was increased from 87 to about 144 naira. And now we have petrol selling for 350, almost 400 naira, depending on where you're buying from, whether you're buying from the petrol stations or you're patronizing the black market. Why haven't we had Nigerians, I mean, how come we've not had people on the streets protesting? And all of a sudden, then it's a protest. And no one is saying that you can't protest because, I mean, it is within your rights in a democratic dispensation that you, you can protest as long as it's peaceful and it doesn't constitute a threat to national security and the state. Then you can, you can protest, protesting within the ambience of the law as long as you don't cause mayhem, you're not a, uh, a nuisance and all of that. So protest is your right. But we know how we have reacted. The government has responded and reacted to protests over time. But you, so it brings us back to the fact that, okay, it's fine to have the protest. But all of a sudden, we're having this protest. And then it's becoming very destructive. That's not protest. Could it be that some elements are responsible for this uh, behind uh, what, it, what we're faced with at a time? Could this be sponsored? Because, I mean, we have few more days to the elections. And could it just be that it's just a plan? 
you know, to cause confusion, mayhem, and disrupt the system. Who are those responsible for this? Are these really Nigerians that are very angry and they have decided to be very destructive in the process of um, protesting? Or could it also be that some elements have hijacked the protest? I mean, usually if you have a protest, it's expected that the police would be there because this, the responsibility of the police is to ensure that lives and properties are protected. They have no business. I mean, the police have... It's the responsibility of the police to be uh, around in a civil society. The military or the, uh, you know, the army, whatever it is you want to call them, have no business uh, policing a civil society. They have no business. The reason they were created was for, you know, uh, resisting external aggression and attacks on the territory. And so that's their business. They have no business in policing. The police is in existence. But this is not the case. We'll just have to take a break when we return. We'll be looking at a first conversation right here. Uh, the fact that there's been an increase in the movement of people. Now, movement is a universal concept. People will always move. But right now, it seems to be on the high. And several sectors of the economy, just like the medical, is being hit. You have the teachers who probably will be leaving because of the policy from the United Kingdom. And now the banking sector is also on this list. That's what we're talking about. Uh, what's the way forward? How do we solve all of this problem? Please stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>